couple weeks since the Super League Arena Games. It was an awesome experience, but I know what a lot of you are wondering and what I was wondering is why did I swim so poorly at the Arena Games? So we're gonna get into that. It was a great learning experience and it did definitely motivate me, let's say, to figure, my, figure out my swim and what's been going on because I have been swimming a little bit poorly lately. But here's the race footage, the race recap diving in, all the pain, all the goodness that nobody got to see from the heats. But here it is, Super League Arena Games recap. Race is done, didn't make the final. I was out by about nine seconds. So that was pretty, pretty unfortunate. Just, you know, didn't make it. But I, when you look at the, over the course of a 20, almost a 24 minutes and I'm out by nine seconds, I think I actually held my own pretty well. The pre-race, everything was good. I had lots of time to warm up. There was the warm up pool. Um, we had a couple trainers and treadmills. I didn't bother getting on the trainer. I knew I'd have a couple minutes to spin when I was setting the bike up, but uh, I just did like a 10 minute run with some pickups, felt good. And then probably a 10 minute swim as well, uh, three or four pickups and felt fine. Felt ready to, ready to go. So set everything up. I actually elected to do uh, ice water on my bike instead of like a sport drink or something because I thought that'd be better. So you have to set that up, set your shoes up, get the elastic set up, uh, go over to the bike, actually did, or go over to the run treadmill, put your shoes out. I put a couple things in my bin just in case I wanted it after the first heat, like a bottle of sport drink and uh, some extra body glide in case I needed more on my shoes or something. And yeah, then we lined up. I was called out first because I was seated last. Hey, so I beat my seed, so that was pretty good. Uh, and then, you know, it, it all kind of happened really quickly. Like, I felt like we were warming up, and then it was like two minutes later we started. So, uh, dove in, quickly realized, and this is not a surprise, that I was just going to be totally on my own on the swim, pretty far behind, um, which is exactly what happened. So, I think I, yeah, I swam at 228. I was pretty far back. I don't think anybody else was... You know, I think maybe the next slowest was like 10 seconds ahead of me or so. Um, so, you know, had my work cut out for me there, but I wasn't too discouraged and I jumped on the bike, felt pretty strong and like I knew I was pulling guys back and I actually did pass a few guys on the bike. I think that's where I pushed a little bit too hard because I kind of was like, oh, I got to get myself into the top four or five on the bike, but I might have been better off kind of holding back a few more seconds and uh, doing, you know, saving a little bit of that energy, but pushed pushed it pretty far above threshold. And then um, that's kind of where I kind of got on the run and felt okay, but I knew it was, you know, uh, really on the rivet. And I was running sort of in a close, you know, uh, position with fourth, fifth, sixth. And then I did end up finishing the first run in, I think fifth, but I was right behind fourth place by like one second. So I was in a pretty good spot to potentially uh, make the final. Cause if I was top four, I'm in, but I was really cooked. Like I knew I was way above threshold and I was curious how I'd be able to back that up on the second round. So uh, you have five minutes or I think it was even less than five minutes to set everything up for round two and then you start in a stagger. So I was just staring at that red light. As soon as the red light goes out, you can run and jump in. And um, the thing that I think I did really well was pacing the swim. Cause even though the first round I was like way behind everyone, the second round I only slowed down two seconds. So I was 230. Most other people slowed down a lot more than that. They were kind of like slowing down 10 seconds or something like that. So the second swim I definitely paced pretty well. Um, but yeah, I, was, I wasn't I was in last now because of the staggered start and I had passed some guys, so I felt like I was more in the mix on the second round to start the bike, which was good. Um, but I got on the bike and I knew that I just didn't have the legs. Like I, I went a little bit too hard on that first round. Um, so I was struggling to kind of hold. I probably didn't hold much above threshold, to be honest, on the, on the second bike. I was at probably at least 30 watts lower or something than the first round. But I kind of just was sitting in sixth like 10 seconds back and that's just sort of how it stayed for the rest of the entire stage. I didn't really make up, maybe made up a couple seconds on the bike and then um, my T2 wasn't quite as good as it had been the first round. So I was like, you know, 12, 14 seconds down starting the run and it just sort of hovered there. Um, 
with me in sixth, Mathis Bolia in uh, in fifth, and then I think it was Baronsov from Slovakia in fourth. Those two guys were kind of like pushing each other. They wanted to get the fourth place spot, and I was just hovering there like 12 seconds back, and I was able to pick it up in the last few hundred meters and just sort of try to go as fast as I could because I knew there's a chance if I was sixth and I went faster than the next heat, I would uh, I'd be able to make it. But there was, I, I finished strong. I ended up having actually one of the, I might have had the very fastest run split in my heat for uh, the second round, but a lot of those guys at the front were obviously cruising and they knew they had their spot locked up. So um, waited around and uh, sort of, you know, saw Lionel, I, I gave him the advice that I think it's almost impossible to go too easy on the first round. And he was actually probably one of my main competitions for maybe qualifying, so maybe I shouldn't have given the advice, but I think uh, he would have made it anyway. But I was kind of, Waiting around a bit nervously, wondering if I'd make it, but yeah, that second heat was pretty quick and, and those guys went faster than me. Um, I think fifth and sixth were both faster than me, so so the really it ended up being the nine seconds that I was behind fifth place in my heat um, that made it that I didn't make it. So that's kind of it. So before that recap, I alluded to how my swim has not been too great lately and in the arena games my swim times were not super great so I swam a 228 and a 230 for the two 200s long course uh, from round round one and round two uh, they're pretty consistent times but just consistently pretty slow now I've obviously been able to swim pretty well in a lot of my races been a little bit inconsistent but overall I would say I've definitely performed better in races than I did there and it sort of got me wondering, you know, how are these guys on average swimming 15 seconds faster than me in a 200 when I know that that's just not what my typical swim fitness would show. So it really motivated me to figure that out. So the day after the race, on the way back, we needed a break and there was a YMCA that had a lane swim open. So James and I got a bunch of underwater swim footage of me. I was able to actually analyze and figure out what I think is the main issue with my stroke that was causing me to be inefficient. So as you can see in this footage, I seem to have a pretty good catch in the front part of my stroke and I, I hold the water pretty well. Um, that's probably not the area where I need the most improvement, but I seem to sort of lose my momentum through my pull by not finishing my stroke towards the back. Now that causes a few different issues. One is that I don't quite rotate enough in the hips because I'm just not quite getting my hand to clear that hip at the back and that's losing a little bit of propulsion. Um, obviously just not pulling all the way back, that's a good opportunity for propulsion that I was missing. And then the last part is I was sort of pulling my hand out early and by doing that actually kind of pulling my hand forward through the water which was actually creating drag a little bit as well. So. That really sort of was a light bulb to me once I saw that footage and kind of figured out that that's something I've never really focused on in my training. I've never focused on that in my, you know, drills or anything that I've done with swimming. So once I decided to make that my focus, it didn't take more than a couple swims to start seeing improvements. And my times in the pool started coming down. I was a lot more relaxed. It felt like I was a lot I am now a lot more in control of my effort, whereas before my stroke rate just got so high, my heart rate got so high that it felt like I got above threshold at paces that just weren't something that, you know, was gonna make me competitive. So that's been my focus in the swim. I feel as though I have found that kind of missing piece in my form and my times have been coming way down. My benchmark has been, you know, Cody Beals swimming, who's been swimming great for the last quite a while, but especially the last several months and he was like way, way ahead of me, uh, you know, before arena games when I was struggling a bit in the swim and he's still quite a bit ahead of me, but I've definitely closed the gap a little bit and it's great to have him there as a benchmark and training buddy along with all the other guys here in Guelph. So really positive, you know, mindset now is what I've got going in the swim because that was what was lagging. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about how I'm preparing and how my training block has been going for 70.3 Oceanside where I'll be trying to defend my title from 2022. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.